All right, welcome back to Electronic Structure and Bonding in Inorganic Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, we're going to continue doing some stuff with molar susceptibility. And what we're going to do in this video is more of a practical application, but depending on how mean your teacher is, you could still see something like this on the exam for the lecture. Okay, so what I've given is a molar magnetic susceptibility, and it's 0 0.01 Bohr magneton squared per Kelvin. And we're again going to assume the temperature is going to be 298 Kelvin, although you would just plug in whatever temperature they give you, or you can just assume that's the temperature for your experiment, depending on what temperature you did it at. And what I want to calculate is not just the number of unpaired electrons. I want to figure out, let's say I have an iron coordination compound. I want to figure out, is it iron 2 plus in the high spin state, iron 2 plus in the low spin state, iron 3 plus in the high spin state, or iron 3 plus in the low spin state? And you might say, well, that would be really difficult to do, but actually it's really not. Okay, so what we're going to do first, all right, is we're going to calculate the number of unpaired electrons for each case. Let's look at iron 2 plus. So let's go to the periodic table. All right. So here's iron. If it loses two electrons, thus two plus, it's going to lose these two over here, the 4s2 electrons. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So that means iron two plus, these are going to, this is going to be d6, 6d electrons. Let's figure out iron three plus. Well, it's going to lose these 4s2 electrons, and then it's going to lose one d electron. So it's going to have one, two, three, four, five. So these are going to be, these are going to be d5 down here. All right. D5. Now what we need to do is use our rules for high spin and low spin octahedral splitting patterns and we're going to fill in the orbital diagrams right here. All right. Just keep in mind up here these are your E sub G orbitals and these are T2G down here for all of these. All right so let's do the high spin D6 case. High spin. So we're going to do one, two, three and then we come up here high four, five and then come down here six. All right, now let's do the low spin case. One, two, three, and then we have to stay low, four, five, six. Notice already there is a different number of unpaired electrons between these two. Hmm, that's interesting because maybe if I calculate the number of electrons, unpaired electrons up here and it matches one of these, that'll tell me which one it is. All right, so now D5 high spin, let's do that. One, two, three, come up high, four, five, all right? Let's do the iron three low spin now. One, two, three, you have to stay low, four, five. All right, so now in each of these, let's indicate the number of unpaired electrons. Okay, here in the, in the first one, one, two, three, four, n would have to be four in this case. In the low spin case, this is n equals zero. There's no unpaired electrons. In this case, n equals five, and in this case, n equals 1. All right, so basically all of these have a different n. So if I calculate an n from this up here, and I get one of these n's, that means it has to be one of these compounds, assuming I did the experiment, right, and it is iron. All right, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and take this equation right here, copy it. We're going to paste it down here. Let's do that. All right, so there's my equation. Let me go ahead and move it a little bit up here. All right, so what were we given? We were given a molar magnetic susceptibility of 0 0.01. All right, so if you remember kind of what we did in the last video, what we did is we basically took these square roots and just squared both sides. And you don't have to do that. You could more or less just drop the square root signs, but we'll go ahead and do that for rigorously correctness n times n plus 2 is equal to 8tx sub m. All right, so that's my equation. All right, now let's go ahead and plug stuff in. All right, so I have on this side, I'm going to have n squared plus 2n is equal to 8 times the temperature 298 Kelvin times my molar magnetic susceptibility point 0.01 Bohr magneton squared per Kelvin. All right, let's go ahead and figure out what that number is. All right, so I'm going to plug in 8 times 298 Kelvin and then times 0 0.01. 
All right, now let me just tell you this. When I did this, the exact number I got when I plugged this in, given the information, was 23.84. All right. Now, you could probably, if you watched the, the other video where we algebraically solved for n, you probably realize that we would need a whole number for that to work out nicely. Otherwise, we're going to be using the quadratic formula. That's a pain. You would just round this number to 24, all right? Um, you're never going to get, when you, when you do this experimentally, you're never going to get exactly a whole number, so you just round it to the nearest whole number. So this is going to be n squared plus 2n is equal to 24. And that's how I'm going to solve for n, all right? So now let's go ahead and do that n squared plus 2n minus 24 is equal to 0. I just went ahead and rearranged that. So now I'm going to solve for n. I need to find the roots. All right, so what numbers, if I multiply them to give negative 24, also add to be minus 2? Well, if I say multiply 6 times minus 4, that gives me minus 24, and 6 minus 4 is 2. So that means this is going to be n plus 6 and n minus 4. So that means my roots for n are going to be negative 6 and positive 4. And if you remember, any negative root we throw out because it's impossible to have a negative number of unpaired electrons. That has to be positive. So my n is 4. There are four unpaired electrons in this complex. Hmm, so what I'm going to do now is come up here and say, do any of these have n equals 4, any, any of these cases? And sure enough, this one does right there, n equals 4, right? So that means, that means that this compound, experimentally determined, is going to be iron 2 plus in the high spin case. All right, and generally what you're going to find is that for any metal it could be, you know, you know, say uh, cobalt, right? You could have cobalt two plus high spin, cobalt two plus low spin, cobalt one plus high spin, cobalt one plus low spin. They're usually all going to have a different n whenever you do this uh, splitting diagram for each of them. They're all going to have a different n. And you usually pick the two most common oxidation states, although if there are more, more oxidation states that are that are available, you might have to test those also. But generally, there's two common oxidation states, all right? And they're all going to have a different n. So when you do this experimentally, you should be able to determine which n it is because there should only be one uh, situation that matches it, all right? So hopefully this makes sense. You start with a molar magnetic susceptibility. You calculate n through, that, through the equation and then you'll be able to determine which coordination compound it is. All right, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, and now we're going to move on to something different in the next few videos. All right, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.